Welcome, one and everyone, to this week's episode of Scotch and Smoke Rings, episode what? 190, that is correct. Today's episode is fraught with trial and adventure, heroes and heroines, monsters and villains, all in the form of myself. Howdy, pleasure to be multiple personalities for you today. Hope you are all having a fantastic Thursday. I'm having a good, a good Thursday as well, even though I am sacrificing a lot to be here. That's right, my office is having a big morale event, and uh, they're watching The Big Lebowski in the office right now while eating pizza and snacks and just having a general good old time. And uh, you know what? That does sound fun, but you know what sounds even more fun? Being here with you today, ladies and gentlemen. They may have pizza. They may have The Big Lebowski. But I... I have cigars and scotch. I've got a lot of great stuff to show you today. Um, first, first we're going to do the scotch because I actually have some today. Today we are drinking some Scoresby, very rare, blended scotch whiskey. And uh, I had it in the freezer, so it's cold. Shawarma says, why are you here? Look, uh, there are many great things about being in an office for 12 to 14 hours a day. But uh, one detriment is that they do not have cigars. They have a strict no smoking indoors policy, no drinking indoors policy. So, uh, cheers ladies and gentlemen. Greg Hartung says, did somebody say Oxhorn has a book? Gulbreth says, Oxhorn wrote a what? Shwarma says, stop, the book thing comes later in the hour. But, shawarma, my friend, uh, is it ever too late to talk about this, this, this right here, this beautiful masterpiece, if I do say so myself? Archaeologists, trying to find out more about this century, will dig through the layers of earth, discover this novel, and it will tell them everything they needed to know about the 21st century. But, shawarma, to your point, uh, we will talk about it later. Instead, today we are going to be talking about scotch and cigars. But first of all, Dread the Almighty says, uh, How long did it take you to grow your beard? This is about uh, a year and two months, three months worth of, gro of growing. So two years is when you reach your terminal length, and I'm almost there. I'm working on it. Uh, Ilikes says, I own a copy straight from Christmas. Awesome, my friend. I'm so glad that you got a copy of my novel. It means a lot to me, and I will, I will tell you more about my novel later. Cute little hardcore kitten is in the Twitch TV chat, ready to moderate, saying smig bee 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 bee. Apparently, cute little hardcore kitten has turned into a robot. That's okay, because we like robots here. Azanoth says, this is really quiet for me, and I have all my volume set to max. Well, then that must mean I'm doing something wrong. How about this? Test, 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 test. Test, test, test. No. Test, test, test. No. Test, 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 test. No. Nothing. Trying to increase the vote. Test, 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 test. No, that's not working. You hear me fine? You guys are fine? Okay. If most of you are fine, then uh, I'm not going to worry too much about this. Rolleron says, all good. Look, ladies and gentlemen, um, none of you hold mustard to Rolleron. None of you. Not a single breathing one of you. Why? Because Rolleron sent me this. This is a Drew Estate Egg Maduro, handmade in Nicaragua, and this is my favorite cigar in the world. Only fans of this program who have been going here, uh, coming to the show for a very long time, will know <clears throat> that I have smoked two of these in my life. One? No, both. I smoked both of them on the show, so I guess you're going to have to go back through the archives to see it. But Rolleron, the 
uh, awesome Oxhorn fan that he is, went and bought me one and sent it to me, and it arrived today. I'm going to smoke it in front of all of you and enjoy every moment of it. Look, it comes in a casket. It's a cigar in a casket. Usually you wait to bury puppies and things like this, but no, it's a cigar. And it's in a casket. Watch. It has a lid. And look, the cigar is even sitting in a bed of curled up tobacco. It just looks amazing. I mean, it's just, it's just amazing. Uh, Cam Bob says, you look awesome. You have to smoke it. Whoa. Yeah, I'm going to smoke it. This thing, I'm going to set it on fire, smoke it in front of all of you, and really enjoy every moment of it. But we have to be careful. We can't just rush into things like this. No. No. we got to do it with purpose. So we shall start by taking a sip of our gentlemanly scotch. Cheers. Nice. We have to get our tools together. Here is my uh, guillotine. And I'm not going to be using my torch today. No, I do feel that today is a matches kind of day. So we're going to be using matches. And now for the main event. Delightful. All right, buddy. Time to get you out of this bed of tobacco. I don't want to hurt it. It's so fragile. Oh, my. Look at that. You can see why they call it an egg Maduro, right? I mean, it's got an egg on the inside. This looks like an ostrich's neck after having swallowed an egg. This looks like a snake after having swallowed a rabbit. But all of that is tobacco. It's magic. Alright. Uh, last time I smoked one of these on camera, um, I was worried about it exploding. But I don't need to worry about that anymore because I've had a few of these before. WGSX Frank says Bender would cry if he could see that cigar and if he had tear ducts. The funny thing about Bender is that even though he is a robot, he actually does cry a lot in the uh, series. So. Alright, just, I'm, I'm just savoring this masterpiece. I'm just looking at the craftsmanship. I mean, look at that. Handmade in Nicaragua. Let's look at this from multiple different angles. Close up. Close up. Close up. It's kind of like a spaceship. A little spaceship. Alright. Uh, here we go. It's time to... I mean, we can't enjoy it fully without setting it on fire, so that's what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to set this on fire, and I'm really going to be enjoying this because this weekend I'm going to California. I've got to go to San Francisco for a business conference, and it's been five years. Five years since I lived in San Francisco. And uh, I'm, I'm going to enjoy myself going back. But I was talking to a buddy there who I'm going to meet up with. And I said, hey, let's meet up at Grant's Tobacco Shop, our favorite cigar shop. And he said that it was closed. My favorite cigar shop in the world is closed. Can you believe that? So I'm going to be enjoying this a lot. Thank you, Rollaround. I don't want to waste too much of it. So here we go. Just a little. Just a little. There we are. All right, no more piddle farting or fiddle parting. Chasing Shadow says, wait, Ox, I think it's a mortar round. We shall find out.
My smoke rings are a little handicapped today. It's not the cigar's fault, it is entirely mine. Little tiny ones. I'm gonna let this thing build up steam and then I'll, um, or smoke, not steam. Ah. And then I'll try again, but look at that sucker. There it goes, ticking away. It starts as a very thin uh, cigarillo, but then it, it becomes a robusto about down there, until finally becoming a Churchill about down there, and then exploding into something completely crazy and amazing right about there. So. Goulbreth says, hey, Oxworm, what do you think about the newest pope? Even though, even if you are not Catholic, some people like myself find it very interesting. I'm not Catholic. Uh, I was, as Ninja of WoW suggests, I was expecting them to name myself as pope, uh, just because I am wearing the suspenders among all of us. I mean, they may have the royal vestments, but they lack suspenders. That kind of, I mean, a pope needs suspenders. Anyway, regardless, they did um, name a South American gentleman as the new Pope. That's the first time that an American, someone from the Americas, uh, has been named Pope, and I think that's great. It's, it's fantastic that we have uh, a non-European Pope. So, cool, coolness all around. I'm not a Catholic, so I don't have a dog in the fight, but uh, good for them. My smoke rings are bad today. Uh, Bernard says, Greetings from Norway Ox. Not often can I watch your classy show, but uh, I don't have school tomorrow, so I can stay up late. Awesome, Bernard. Well, welcome to the show. Pleasure to have you here, and I hope you can come back in the future. Chasing Shadows says, do you have a humidor at your house, Ox? Indeed. I've got a uh, glass cabinet in the living room with all of my humidors stacked. They're empty because I've smoked all the cigars, but they are there. And then I have one humidor sitting right here. Um, I keep my pipe tobacco in it. Trusty Royd says, do only smoke cigars... Oh, do you only smoke cigars, and are they as addictive as cigarettes? I only smoke cigars and tobacco pipes. I've never tasted a cigarette in my life. Um, I personally have never been tempted to be addicted to them. I do know people who have become addicted to cigars, though. So they're not safe. I'm just saying that right now. However, they are, in my personal opinion, infinitely safer than cigarettes for the sole reason that you don't actually inhale the smoke from a cigar. With cigarettes, you bring the smoke into your lungs, and that allows your lungs, a very soft tissue, to absorb more of the tar and nicotine. Whereas with a cigar, you just bring it into your mouth, and it's certainly not safe by any stretch of the imagination, but you do absorb less nicotine, less tar, and uh, if you smoke it properly, in my opinion, it's less dangerous than cigarettes. There we go. Smoke rings are coming. Smoke rings are coming. Cheers, ladies and gents. Bottoms up. <laughs> Terror Wraith says, uh, who picked up Heart of the Swarm this week? My friend, I hope you're enjoying Heart of the Swarm. I've been in the beta, and I have been enjoying it. Um, no major review from me. I'm not going to show off the footage, but I mean, Blizzard can't go wrong with StarCraft. Hey, Greg Hartling says I'm pleased to inform you that pa Patricka and I, Patricka and I, will once again meet up in Orlando for MegaCon. I'll be sure to send you a picture with us too. Well, thank you very much, Greg. I can't wait to see it. I will, of course, show it off here on the show. Best Rogue Ever 27 says, ever thought of having a classy pipe? No man, I just I don't I don't do the whole pipe thing. Those 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 fishermen those fishermen and their pipes. 
and silly hats. Ridiculous. Especially those vent shaft pipes that bend down men. I totally don't do those. They're just for silly people. Silly people with their bent shaft pipes. <laughs> it's not working too well because I blow a smoke ring and then blow a smoke ring into the smoke ring and then blow a smoke ring into the smoke ring into the smoke ring and then it just becomes a smoke puff. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm probably going to get this question a lot. Dillinger Gaming says, Ox, what are you smoking? This is actually a cigar. It's not anything crazy. It's not going to blow up. It doesn't have some sort of strange substance in it. It's just a, a normal tobacco cigar made in Nicaragua, sent to me from an awesome fan, Rolleron, who's in the chat right now. Kudos to you, Rolleron. I am having a fantastic Thursday, thanks to you. No, really, this is a, an ocarina? Like Zelda ocarina of time? Why am I messing them up? Have I lost my smoke ring edge? It's probably my nose. I'm probably messing up the smoke with my nose. Well, I got a few a few good ones out of there. There's got to be some sort of breeze going on through here. By the way, if you're a pro cigar smoker like myself, always blame the breeze. Uh, Best Rogue Ever says it looks like a hand bomb grenade. Qu could quite possibly be. Uh, Baldock says, what is the classy word for this week? Enclave. The Cardinals went into their enclave to choose the latest pope, enclave. How's that? Dillinger Gaming says, what are you drinking tonight, Oxford? I am drinking some Scoresby single malt. I'm sorry, blended scotch whiskey. It's not single malt, but it is still delicious. Full breath, I said conclave. What's wrong with you? Not enclave. My mustache is getting long. So I tweeted out earlier, Ghoul Breath, it's spelled with an E, not an O. It's Enclave, it's an E-N-C. Enclave, not Enclave. And you said spelling fell on me? Same with you, cute little hardcore kitten. All right, guys, I'm giving them both a hard time because they're longtime fans of the show and they come off on, so I'm not being a jerk. But it's spelled E-N-C, not Enclave, O-N. Yes, thank you. Enclave, enclave, that's how it's spelled. But it's pronounced Enclave. Oh, that was to yourself, Cool Breath? Okay, you didn't really... All right. Well, kudos to you. That was actually rather funny. Dillin Dillinger Gaming says, Why are you using ice cubes, no cold stones? I do have whiskey stones, and I have used them on the show here in the past. I decided to use ice cubes today because I couldn't find my whiskey stones. Uh, I'm supposed to keep them in the freezer, and they used to be in this bag, but as you can see, I've got pens in this bag now, so I don't know where they are. I need to find them. They were a gift from uh, Clint Hackleman of Mind Flame Productions. You all should know him. He makes great stuff. Oh, man. Come on. Form says, hey, Oxford, long-time fan here. Been a fan since Vanilla Wow. That is indeed a very long time. I am so glad that you're here today. It's great to, to say howdy to my long-time fans. Cheers. Reefer93 says, first cigar I've seen like that. Please explain. I told you I'm going to be getting this a lot. This is an Egg Maduro. It is a regular 
tobacco, um, it's just regular tobacco made by the fine fellows at Drew Estate. This was a gift from Rollaron. It appeared in my inbox, my mailbox today. And it's just uh, got a big wad of tobacco in the middle. I mean, that's all there is to it. H Star says, Fan art come already? No, it hasn't come yet, but I saw your email and you sent me a link to your Facebook page. And uh, I clicked on it and I don't have access to your photos. So I couldn't see the fan art that you sent to me, sadly. Elizabeth says, Is it possible that the stash is messing up the smoke rings? I didn't even think of that. You're totally right. It's messing. That's what it is. All right, I need to figure out a way to hold the stash back. Yeah, that's what I'll do. All right, here we go. That was it. It was the stash. How could I have not have thought of that? Thank you, Elizabeth. I'm going to have to get some stash wax and push this bad boy back for the show from now on. Man, do I have any sitting around here? No, I've got my um, Honest Amish beard balm. By the way, for those of you saying that I'm Amish, take a look at this Am Honest Amish guy. No mustache. Amish people do not have mustaches. If you don't believe me, go to Google. The Google machine and type in Amish, you will find they do not have mustaches. H Star says, Is there another way I can send it? Yeah, just send the image as an attachment to Brandon at oxhorn.com. Okay, so the, the one drawback about this cigar is that it appears to be going out rather quickly. Like, I have to huff and puff at it to get it lit again so that I can continue to uh, blow smoke rings. Come on. There we go. You were totally right. It was the mustache. Wow. <laughs> I didn't lose my skill. I just grew a mustache. That's what it was. This thing getting in the way of my smoke rings. Where's my mustache wax? Blast it all. N. Goatee says, I, was, I sat here thinking that I knew that voice from somewhere. Wow, it's great to put a face to the great WoW movies. Well, thank you very much. I do appreciate it. I did do most of the uh, voice acting for my movies myself. Uh, I do have friends that hop on occasionally to help me with the voice acting. One of my best friends from high school did Staghorn. But I did Mork Tooth and Oxhorn and Associate Professor Evil and Hat the Singing Turtle and a bunch of others. Bistro says, Ox, I submitted fan art. Hopefully you got it. I'm wearing my new hat. That's right. I did get that. Let me pull it up here. Yes. Wait. No. Where is it? Bistro. There we go. All right. Uh, let's see if we can find a way to share my screen. To have an appreciative modern audience. You can help it find that audience. This is find fan art from... Right now. Bistro. Know about the wonderful music you're Check it out. Right here on Radio this music. A finer gentleman I have not seen in quite some time. He's rocking the pipe. He's rocking the beard. And check out that classy hat. Incidentally, that, that is the kind of hat that I wear uh, on a daily basis. To work and from work. I usually only wear the derby for formal events. Like dates and photo shoots. And of course, this show. Because one must dress his best when he is amongst his peers. Cheers, ladies and gentlemen. Bottoms up. Scotch time.
Ghoulbreath says, Ox, I'm going back to PAX East again, dressed as a character from Team Fortress 2. Do you remember the boss from that game, the Christian Brutal Sniper? The... Wait, TF2 didn't have bosses. TF2 was PvP, right? You ran around with your healer and your pyro. I was always the pyro. I know, people said that the pyro was for, for those without, without uh, skill, but... Yeah, uh, who says I can do video games? I mean, come on, I'm just Oxhorn. Best rogue ever, 27 says your eyebrows look very clean cut. No? My eyebrows? If so, that's natural. It's not like I shaved my eyebrows to shape. <laughs> oh, Saxton Hale mode had a bunch of bosses. I sadly never uh, played the game in that mode, so I'm not familiar with them. See, it's out again. Trusty Royd says, what is your profession, if you don't mind me asking? I am the technical marketing manager for a startup in Seattle. That is my profession. Dillinger Gaming says, will there be, will there be a smoke ship later in the evening? Of course, this is Scotch and Smoke Rings. We end every episode with a classy smoke ship. All right, time to fire this bad boy back up. One moment. The problem with this is that the smoke rings have to navigate past my arm as I'm holding up my mustache. I have a handicap now. It is the mustache. How long did it take you to grow that beast of a beard? Asks Dillinger Gaming. About a year and three months. Two years is my goal. Ox, you really need to try a JFR cigar, says Redneck Champ. They can be found online, but they are meant to be sold only in stores. I will have to check them out. I'm always happy to try new cigars. <laughs> Lepidus of Rune Totem says, That cigar reminds me of those 1920s cartoons. Yeah, the ones where the cigar explodes. Hopefully not tonight. Whoa. I'm losing a bit of the outer leaf. So it is burning unevenly ever so slightly, and I don't have my torch here to touch it up. This one is out. Come on, ladder. Here we go. So what you do if it starts... Uh, burning unevenly, you just uh, touch up the wrapper ever so slightly, just so that it burns evenly. You don't want a haggard, sort of haphazard cigar. There we go. There we are. Yeah, it's my mustache. is totally messing it up. Dillinger Gaming says, you never know, Ox. If you did get that cigar from a friend, maybe run it through a metal detector. It might go off. Yeah, but I trust Raul around. He's a good gent. He's not going to put anything explosive in my cigars. Boom! Ah, that would be bad. Ah. 
I'm almost tempted to trim it off, but I can't do that. It would be heresy. Yeah. Uh, Grandy says, by the way, it's been great to see you're still doing so well, Oxhorn. Been uh, following you since Mid-Wrath of the Lich King. Thanks for all the great memories. Well, thank you so much for being such a long-time fan. Pleasure to have you. Baldock says, did Oxhorn write a book? Shawarma says, wait, did someone say Oxhorn wrote a book? I must have missed that news. It can't be true, can it? Why, both of you are absolutely correct. This is The Tale of Chloron Hastings, my young adult fantasy novel. That's right. It is a swashbuckling adventure fantasy yarn that takes place at sea. There are monsters and supernatural creatures and marauders and great tidal waves of action. I should have... Why didn't I think of that when I was promoting the book? I should have used that as a tagline. I have to remember that. Anyway, this is my novel, available as an ebook in paperback or in hardcover from chloronhastings.com. C-L-O-R-A-N-H-A-S-T-I-N-G-S dot com. $9.99 for the ebook, $19.99 for the paperback, and a respectable $19.99. Wait, no. How much is the hardcover? $20? No, it's $9.99 for the ebook, $19.99 for the paperback, $29.99 for the hardcover. I think it's $30 for this bad boy. But you are welcome to purchase it, my friends. I do hope you enjoy it. I'm trying to, like, strategically miss my mustache by, like, Putting out the smoke and then jolting my head back. It's not working very well. <laughs> it's not working. All right, I'm going to have to... All right, you guys are wanting the book and you need the URL. All right, I'm happy to help. www.chloronhastings.com There you go. Click on that and you can purchase the book from your favorite online retailer. Amazon.com, Barnes & Noble, whatever you like. Dot Flora. Hastings. Dot com. Penned by me, myself, and I, no others. I finished it when I was 24 years old, and I just got around to publishing it. Frustrating myself. Oh! Cheers, ladies and gents. <laughs> Detective John McLean says, Oh, everything about this cast is so overpowered. Followed. Why, I thank you, good sir. I do hope that I am uh, going to be responsible for starting a trend. I am looking forward to OxCon my own convention where everybody does cosplay as me that's right they grow beards they wear suspenders they wear derbies and those over 18 smoke a gentlemanly like this i'm going to be making the drew estate company so much money by promoting their egg maduro they they need to like sponsor me or something they should sponsor this show i'm just saying Rolleron says no ego no no none at all I am the humblest guy you will ever find. In fact, I'm the most of the humblest in the world. There is no one who could out-humble me. That is how humble I am. True story. It was a thin one, but it kind of hovered. It was like the picture-perfect ring for just a moment. Ninja Vaw says, care for a humble pie, Oxhorn? I would love it, because I love pie. I, you know, cake is all right, but honestly, if the cake was a lie, I would be all right with it, because I do prefer pie. Now, if the pie was a lie, some stuff would be going down. I'm just saying. I would be happy to have every birthday with a pie instead of a cake. Candles in the pie, that's fine. Everyone can have a slice of my pie. Uh, 
I'm just a chimney spouting smoke. I can't do the smoke rooms because of my mustache. <laughs> America rules my life, says, hey man, where are you from? America. Bam. What? What? I'm from the U.S. of A. What? A kid. A kid. Well, I am from America. I'm from Seattle. But I don't rule your life. No, man, be free. Free to rule your own life. That's what we're all about. Oh. <laughs> America rules my life says nice. I'm from Kansas. All right. Kudos to you. go. Maybe I've pushed it back enough to get out of my way. Shawarma says, is Seattle still part of America? Well, it is being overrun with hippies. So I don't know how much longer it will be a part of America, but for the moment it is still part of the good old U.S. of A. Ninja Vaugh says, Octron, you look like an older version of a Boy Scout picture. I am actually an Eagle Scout. I'm not even making that up. I am an Eagle Scout. Yeah, I was in the Boy Scout for Boy Scouts for like six or seven years. Yeah, no regrets. Boy Scouts were great. I had a blast. If there ever is a zombie apocalypse, my tent will be pitched before all of yours. America's, Americans Rule My Life says, how many hippies have you taken out so far? Seriously, how many? Look, I only take out hippies in my fantasy life online. Uh, uh, my movies, of course, revolve around hippies being destroyed in various ways, whether it's from exploding elf on machines or from the fiery wrath of Associate Professor Evil. In real life, however, I'm a peaceful gentleman, and we coexist, if with animosity. Every time, every time I do this stream, people on Twitch TV ask me if I'm allowed to do this stream. Just to answer your questions, everybody, yes, I am allowed to do this stream. I was invited here by the fine people on Twitch TV. This show is gaming-related because I make gaming-related movies, even if I don't play actual video games while I do this stream, although sometimes I do. Uh, so, yes, they know that I smoke cigars and drink scotch on this show, and they're cool with it. They're cool with it. So kick back, relax, light up a gentlemanly if you are of the appropriate age and grow a beard. Bernard says, uh, since I'm from Norway, I don't know Scout's army that much. Do you care to explain to me? Well, it's not really an army. It's just the Boy Scouts of America. It's a club where boys go to learn outdoorsmanship skills and morality and stuff like that. They go camping and they learn how to build fires and... You know, all those good outdoorsy activities sort of, sorts of things. Since I have become an adult, I have gone on fewer camping trips and hikes than when I was in the Boy Scouts. So I do cherish those memories because I actually really do enjoy going camping. I just don't have an opportunity to do it very often. I live in Seattle. It's a big urban city. We're surrounded by nature, but I'm always too busy. Goldbreath says, Oxron, were you in the Order of the Arrow as a scout? I am, and I'm, I'm wondering. I was. I was a member of the Order of the Arrow. That particular membership didn't really do much for me. It was really focused on Native American um, lore and myth. And while I find that interesting, um, it didn't really have much to do with the Boy Scouts, in my personal opinion. And it seemed too much of like a hierarchy. Like, it was more of a popularity club than any actionable real life skill that you can learn. So I, I'm glad I'm part of the Order of the Arrow, but um, yeah, it was all right. Lepidus of Rune Totem says, I would say Frankenstein reference about Fire's Octorn, but it might hurt you while you're laughing. 
Hey, I, I, I appreciate fire, even if Frankenstein doesn't. Zelda Master 64 asks a pertinent question. Hey, Oxhorn, what food would you eat with a cigar? Uh, cigars are for after dinner. You typically don't eat anything while smoking a cigar, just like why, uh, why hard liquor, like scotch or whiskey, is an after meals drink. If you want a drink to go with food, it's usually wine or beer. But port and harder spirits like whiskey are good for spending time with your friends and having leisurely conversations and talking about the news of the day, politics, religion, life in general, just having a good time with your chums. Rabbit Bung says, with the smoke ring that perfectly went over the cam. Yeah, I tend to do that. I mean, I blow it at you guys, and it can either go that way or that way or that way. I try and aim. A few times I've been able to get it, like, right around the camera, and those are the really impressive times. Let's see if I can do it again. I don't know. Shwarma says, hey, Alexron, can you hold the end of the cigar up to the camera again? I think you've got two different tobaccos in there, at least to look that way, and after a steak, it's perfect. True, cigars are very nice after a steak. Well, that's the end of the cigar. Um, it may be hard to see because of the focus on the camera, but it looks like it's only one tobacco, and uh, it doesn't even look rolled at that. That's one of the drawbacks of cigars like these. The first few leaves are wrapped where, where it looks like the end is stuffed. I can't tell, honestly, but despite how it was created, I really am enjoying the flavor of this particular smoke. Oh, you wanted this end. All right. So that's how it's burning. As you can see, it's burning erratically again. I should probably touch it up, but that's what it looks like so far. Show me a trick with your hat, says Lee Tratch. Well, I don't have any hat tricks. <laughs> I do have some smoke tricks. So here we go. Time to pour a little bit more scotch because I'm running a little low here. Shorma says, yeah, that looks like a uh, tight center wrap with a loose leaf packing. I'm getting the impression that that might be which is typically uh, the hallmark of a lower quality cigar, but in this case, it's all right, because it's hard to get a hand-wrapped cigar that has a bulge in the middle. I think that's just part of the nature of this type of cigar. And it doesn't seem to be negatively impacting the taste. It still is a very flavorful cigar. She Devil is in the chat, finally, after how long? She says, hmm, been a while. It has indeed been a while, She Devil. I'm glad that you're back. I hear that you're doing great things with your uh, uh, gaming girls to die for and so that is awesome pleasure to have you back cute little hardcore kitten you are awesome I am so glad that you are moderating the twitch TV uh, chat where would we be without him oh that's right I was gonna do a trick all right hold on Physics is fun. All right, I got an issue here. Look at that. See that? It's really burning unevenly. I'm going to have to do something about it. Oh, 
Ouch! There's a burning ember on my hand. Ouch! That's all right. We power through it. There we go. A little bit more even. That'll turn white in a moment, and uh, the world will spin for another day. Puta Lol says, OMG, it's Oxford, and he's smoking a huge cigar and doing science. Yes, science. <laughs> Scotch in my mustache is uh, wrecking up my smoke rings. Uh, Redneck Champ says, have you ever tried a Nub Cane Straight Ligero Cigar? I don't know if I've had that particular kind, but I have had the Nub brand before. And the few that I have had from the Nub brand, which I believe is under the umbrella of the Olivia Company, is fantastic, even though they're really tiny. Now, they make the Nub cigars really small like this because the theory goes that the last inch or two of the cigar is always really bad. So they just don't make that part, and the cigar comes out shorter. I don't know if that if that's the way it works, but nub cigars really are delicious. J. Rad the Mighty says, "Do you like science?" I do. When I was in um, high school, I participated in every single science fair. I know, I'm a total geek. But I would make burglar alarms and uh, electroplating was once a, a, an experiment of mine. I even built a robot. I don't know if many of you know that, but when I was in high school for science fair one year, I built a robot. I named it Henry VIII. It had um, infrared sensors around the skirt of it so that when it moved, it would detect edges and obstacles and then turn around and move away. Now that was back in like 1996, right? And I'm sure robotics have evolved since then, but at the time it was fairly impressive. Goldbrus says, I was about to say I built a trebuchet for my last science fair. Trebuchets are, are rather boss as well. So kudos to your, tre uh, to your trebuchet. still coming up. All right, my music is a little loud. Sorry about that. Let me turn that down a bit. All right, I'm going to check my inbox again, H star, to see if I can uh, find your fan art. Yes! And there it is. I found it, H-Star. Here we go. So this is fan art from H-Star. Uh, oh, you can't see it yet, so let me do something about that. If I can move the frame... Okay. There we go. This is by H Star, and it says, "Look, it's fan art." <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Actually, that's really clever. Uh, nicely done, H Star. I gotta say, nicely done. <laughs> oh, I like the song. Raloran says, so punny. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> hey, I liked it, H Star. Nicely done. Kudos to you, my friend. <laughs> uh, Real Grey Ghost says, where do you find your music? I'm actually listening to a free internet radio station right now called Radio Dismuke. 
If you go into Google and type in D-I-S-M-U-K-E, Radio Dismuke, you should find it. And it's just free streaming radio. You can listen to the exact same song I'm listening to right now. I don't have a relationship with them. I just love the music, so I play it. Greg Hartung says, I propose a new segment, reading Gaelic Storm lyrics while wearing a confused expression. That is, of course, um... Yeah, I haven't done that segment of the show for a while, have I? She Devil says, where is your beautiful wife? My beautiful wife is in the other room right now, tending to my beautiful baby boy. Uh, she used to come onto the show very frequently, but ever since we had the boy, uh, that is, of course, impossible because I smoke. And I'm not going to smoke around the boy. That's just, uh, bad. So... Uh, she's in the other room. She says hi. She wanted me to tell everybody hello. And she'll be really glad that you came on, she double. So I just want to point out, look how long that ash has gotten. This is going to collapse on me at any moment. Uh, if other cigars are any indication. So... If suddenly I start screaming because a big pile of hot ash landed in my lap, <clears throat> pay no mind, right? It's okay. Valorant says the ash on mine lasted until the end. Awesome! That is the sign of a quality cigar. Well, I have my don'ts for wives, but um, here it is. XJZX says, Oxhorn! Pleasure to have you here, XJZX. We do this every week, by the way. Same Ox time, same Ox channel. Thursday nights at 7 o'clock p.m. Pacific time. Scotch and smokerings.com. Uh, okay, so here are some advice for husbands, written by a very classy lady in 1913. So 100 years ago, this book was written. Let's see if the advice is still pertinent today. Don't take it for granted that your wife has too much to attend to now. There are children to be able to go out with you, as she used to do in the earlier days of your life together. Ask her, not perfunctionarily, I'm sorry, perfunct Totally, my bad. But as if you really want her, and she will generally manage to go. All right, so apparently women with children don't like to go outside. Thank you. Don't spring it on your wife five minutes before it is time to start that you are going to the other end of Europe and would like her to go too. It is all very well to say that it doesn't take long to pack a couple of bags, but sometimes the things are not ready for packing. Besides, your wife has to make arrangements about the house and children, which can't always be made at a moment's notice. So, in short, be conscientious, husbands. Don't be rude. One more before we move on to wives. All right, this one is long. Don't think that you have, of necessity, done with walking or cycling tours now that you are married, as you can't leave your wife and go away with your old chum. Why not take her? If you will moderate your ardor and be content to walk 15 miles a day instead of 20 and to carry a slightly larger knapsack, you'll never feel the difference, you and your wife can have the most delightful walking tours together. Because we all walk 15 to 20 miles a day, right? <laughs> yeah, at least I don't. Uh, or if she cycles and you will think less of the miles you cover than the charming villages you investigate, <clears throat> you will not need to a better chum than she can be. Sadly... Charming villages have gone the way of Old Yeller in many cases. We are now left with suburbs. But good advice nonetheless. All right, don'ts for wives. Okay, here's a good one. <clears throat> 1913. Remember, this was written in 1913. Ladies, don't take any notice of people who tell you constantly that a wife's place is in her husband's home. 
darning socks and stockings as women did in the good old days. You can darn all the socks and stockings there are to be darned, and you can be at home whenever your husband is, and very often when he is not, and yet leave plenty of time for going out. There you go. Modern women. Don't omit to fill your life with plenty of outside interests. If you sing, join a choral society. Belong to a lecture or literary society. Keep up your French and your music. Visit your friends and invite them to visit you. Nothing includes dullness and even illness so easily as lack of congenial occupation. You will come back to your husband with a bright face instead of a doleful one. That is actually really great advice. That is just as relevant today as it was 100 years ago when it was written. Have hobbies. Do extra household activities. That's important. One more before we go back to smoking cigars, as true gentlemen do. Don't get into the habit of staying indoors because there is nothing particular to go out for. Make an object if you have not make an object if you have not got one. Take the dog for a run on the common. Walk to a shop two miles away to match some wool. Anything to prevent the stay-at-home habit from um, growing upon you. All right, another good bit of advice, even if we don't go out to match wool very often. Uh, still, going outside, having hobbies and interests, all good advice. El Toro Guaco says, all of these were useful for Tolkien's parents. Imagine that. Indeed. Bernhard has to bow out because it is late. Pleasure to have you, Bernhard. So glad you came. Zelda Master 64 says, Hey, Oxford, are you going to BlizzCon this year? I would love to go to BlizzCon again this year. I have not missed a year. I've been there every single year. Uh, I don't know if I will go this year simply because that's a lot of travel, and travel is expensive. But we shall try. Ninja of WoW says, Grow a beard. Beard. Indeed, if you would like to know more about growing a beard, go to growabeardnow.com. It is almost 8 p.m. Indeed, but uh, I have so much cigar left to go, right? I can't waste this wonderful opportunity. So who knows, this show may go a little longer than normal. I should probably text my beautiful wife and see if she's okay. Yes, we live in the same house. She is one room over, and I'm texting her. This is, after all, 2013. One must keep up with the kitties. What is it people do on their phones these days? Emoticons? Or what do they call them? Emoji? I don't know. Uh, Zero Burrito says, Are you smoking a dog? Doesn't look like a dog to me. Don't know what you smoke on a daily basis. <laughs> Jonathan says, Balloon Tower Defense 5, big check. You're wanting me to play Balloon Tower Defense? All right, who wants me to play Balloon Tower Defense while we wait for this lovely cigar to burn down, huh? Not bad. See, the problem with this particular office is the white background. It kind of makes the smoke rings blend in. Wow, Warcraft. You want me to play Warcraft? Nerdboy says, just passing by to say hi. Well, hi there, Nerdboy. Pleasure to have you here today. Uh, okay, my World of Warcraft has not been updated for a while, so that is probably out of the question, as, uh, <clears throat> as I don't have an updated version, and it will take a while to download patches. Baldock says, how will you be spending St. Patrick's Day? Well, I was going to be spending St. Patrick's Day with my brother in uh, a pub here in Seattle, 
that is a video game themed pub. Their menu consists of food found in video games. Like, um, what's one of the examples I saw? They've got mana potions that you can purchase. I think they have delicious cave mold. Seriously, delicious cave mold. So we were going to go there, but uh, I got called in to work. I have to go to San Francisco for a work event, so instead I will be spending St. Patrick's Day this weekend in San Francisco with one of my old buddies when I used to work there. And I haven't decided what we're going to be doing, but most likely we'll be going to an Irish pub. There was one Irish pub where we shot an episode of our weekly video review. For you old-time fans, you'll know what I'm talking about. Uh, and uh, that was a great pub, even though it did kind of remind us of the Irish Mafia. They were an intense bunch of chaps. But I may spend St. Patrick's Day there, although it will probably be packed. Real Cool YOLO says, Did you quit WoW and why? I have not quit WoW, but I do uh, not play quite as much as I used to, and the reasons are numerous, including I am a new father and I have a career, and the two uh, take up the vast majority of my time. But when I have an opportunity to play WoW, I do enjoy it. <laughs> Gnome Destroy says, I worked with a guy who thought the IRA meant Irish Russian Army. Face palm. Breck Torva says, Ox, I wanted to thank you for uh, the writing advice from the last time I was able to be here for the show. And my book is coming along, not very quickly, but your advice uh, has helped me greatly. Well, thank you very much. I'm really glad. I, uh, I look forward to the day when your book is published. It's always a, a great feeling to publish your book and get it out there for the world. Ghoulbreath says smoke ship. All right, so I'm not going to be ending the show quite yet, but it is smoke ship time as it is two minutes past eight o'clock and it is uh, time to blow smoke ship. So what is uh, what are what is on your mind, ladies and gentlemen? What would you like me to blow today? To uh, uh, For those who do not know, at the end of every episode, I blow a smoke ship based on your suggestions. You come up with the ship ideas and I create beautiful tapestry of them with smoke. So, uh, lay out the ideas, ladies and gentlemen. We will pick our favorites. Wow, that's really coming along now. Wow, you guys were ready. Ghoulbreath says, Oxhorn and Thorn Hastings sailing an egg cigar ship, firing bacon-wrapped cannonballs at a horde of zombie hippie vegan elves that only eat tofu, but fall within the thousands to repair to the pair of classy men. Fall within the thousands to the pair of classy men. Gotcha. Nicely done. Rolleron says Oxhorn, Chloron, Staghorn, and Mortus flying over Darnassus on gigantic egg maduros, dropping bacon bombs on hippie elves and their hummus factories <laughs> while Funk and Associate Professor Evil prepare. <laughs> I like the, the hummus factory. Ninja of Wow says Oxhorn, Mortus, and Staghorn smoking an egg maduro while Nova cooking some panda pizzas and Professor Evil rolls gnomes in a nice bacon flavor, butter, bacon flavored butter, while Hat sings about the Enclave on a ship made of mist. That's very detailed. <laughs> Nicely done, my friend. Dumageddon says Oxhorn and the gang on a warship escorting the Archbishop of Stormwind to Vatican City to be excommunicated by the Pope. Right. That, that makes total sense to me, after all. Why should uh, the Alliance have all of the Archbishops? Why not the Horde, right? Shwarma says the joyful ride of the Oxmobile, bringing happiness and joy to all of the world by handing out cigars, cigar eggs, and copies of Thorn Hastings to Panda Pizzas with bacon-eating children. Oh my goodness. Rotopris says peek on penguins swimming along a caramel ocean on chocolate dolphins as Oxhorn is going through the oceans ca uh, catching villains and obtaining gear as every ninja is being killed by associate Professor Evil. Where do you guys come up with this stuff? You're just creative geniuses. That's what I gotta say. Darth Thazanoth says Oxhorn, Mortus, and Staghorn on a golden boat filled with tons of bacon laughing at those hippie elves under a bacon moon and smoking classy cigars. Nice. Grandine says, This chat confirmed for telepathic brain trust. <laughs> hey, it's not my fault that everybody in the chat thinks the way I do. 
Or maybe it is my fault. I don't know. Ooh, this is getting hot to hold. Uh, El Toro Guaco says Oxhorn and Staghorn hitchhiking with dolphins to leave the Earth just in time before it blows up to make room for intergalactic, for an intergalactic motorway. All right, so we had uh, Hitchhiker, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy references there. Dylan Jur Gaming says, "What drives you to keep on doing the Scotch and smoke rings after all these years? It has been many years, um, three or four now." Uh, mainly just to interface with the fans, you know, you guys come every single week, and I, it would it would be remiss of me to not be here for you. You know what? Uh, you all had amazing ideas, but since Ron is the hero of today after sending me this fantastic cigar, I'm going to go ahead with Rollerons. So here we go, ladies and gentlemen, smoke ship time. Don't blink, because if you do, you'll miss it. But here we go. Whoa! I hope you didn't blink, because if you did, you missed it. But for the briefest of moments there before your very eyes, were Oxhorn, Chloron, and uh, Staghorn riding on Egg Maduro ships. Flying over darn asses and dropping baking bombs on hippie elves and their hummus factories while Thunk and Associate Professor Evil combined prepare panda steak using ox chop knives. Which are, of course, better than Ginshu knives. Just saying. Darazanoth says that was awesome. Well, I'm so glad you guys enjoyed it. Uh, it's sometimes hard to discern the ship image from within the lovely smoke, but for those of you with sharp eyes, you saw it. Take screenshots next time, share them with your friends so that they can see by proof that I have the power to smoke ship. Uh, Roger Press says, Ox, when is your next contest and when are, you, when are your next videos coming out? Maybe a combination of the two for adding a winner to the video. I am working on videos, and I hope that my next video will come out shortly. As for my next contest, it depends on if I have any swag to give out. I usually do contests when Blizzard gives me swag to hand out, so we'll, we shall see. Cheers, ladies and gentlemen. Bottoms up. Zelda Master says, Hey, Oxhorn, I sent you an image to your address at oxhorn.com. Awesome. Thank you so much. I'm going to save it for next week just because I have all of my tabs down and it would kind of take a while for me to get everything up. What with the lag and everything. But thank you so much for submitting the fan art and I will be sure to show it off next week, all right? Wow, this is really smoking. I mean, look at that. <laughs> this room is like smoke. I, I don't have a fan in here either. Not particularly healthy, but hey, whatever. Bobby Deffer says, what do you smoke now? This was a gift from Rollaron. This is an Egg Maduro by, Gray, uh, by Drew Estate, and it is fantastic. El Toro Guaco says, speaking of which, I'm using a babble fish to understand all that is said here. I can't actually understand English. <laughs> well, we are fans of the Hitchhiker Sky, aren't we? Wow, this is this is really on fire. 
Doc the Wrench asks, what's the most expensive smoke you have smoked? It was during my bachelor party in Portland, Oregon. My brother treated me. He took me to an Irish pub in Portland. Smoking is not banned in Portland, so we were able to actually smoke in a pub. And uh, when you go into the basement, I forget what the, what the place was called. <clears throat> I'll try to remember it and tweet it out. But if you go into the basement, the basement was set up like a cigar lounge. And you had <clears throat> a plethora of classy gentlemen smoking classy cigars. And they had a great selection for you to purchase. And my brother, he bought me a cigar that was $130 for one cigar, $130. And he gave it to me <clears throat> as an engagement present, and I smoked it, and it was delicious. Now, cigars become that valuable when they're aged and when somebody just decides that it's worth $130. I wouldn't say that it was, like, better than anything I'd ever smoked before, but it was certainly a very tasty cigar. So, <clears throat> Rodiper says, would you smoke a million-dollar cigar? Doubt it. Doubt it very much. I'd instead cash it in for a million dollars. Scaredy Cat says, I hate cigars, I hate beards, I hate hats, but something about Oxhorn is amazing. My friend, look, uh, you're obviously not perfect, uh, because you, otherwise you would like all of those things, but you do like me, so you're forgiven, right? Yeah, there you go. H Star <laughs> says, and if he had a million dollars, he would shave Zug Zug. For those who don't know, the fans decided to name my beard Zug Zug, although it was much shorter then. It's, it's a bit longer now. Uh, and yeah, uh, any one of you, if you want to pay me a million dollars, happy to shave the beard, put it in a baggie, and mail it to you. It's yours. For a million dollars, I'm just saying that. Live on the air, that is my commitment to you. So anyone who wants to pony up the cash, I'm just saying, this is a million dollar beard right in front of you. That's what you're looking at right now. H Star says Zug Zug isn't longer. He's stretching. Hmm. Wisdom in that. Uh, Grin Grinuck says, uh, show, show us some smoke rings. Absolutely. It would be remiss of me to not show you smoke rings. Scaredy Cat says, teach me to beard. I have uh, developed a website called growabeardnow.com where I give you many great tips on how to grow a beard. If you are interested, go to growabeardnow.com. All one word and I will teach you to beard. All right, smoke rings, here we go. They keep wanting to rise, and I'm not sure why. Well, when they rise, they blend in with the color of my face in the background. So I'm trying to aim them down so that you can see them behind a black background. Yeah, there you go. So you can actually see them. Scaredy Cat says, my beard is in baby stage right now. I've got advice for that. In fact, I wrote a blog post called How to Grow a Beard with lots of tips. I'll walk you through all the stages of a gentlemanly beard and uh, give you advice and support for when you decide to grow your famed masculinity. Your man mane is within you. One must simply work on it a little bit and have a bit of patience. Zaniqua says, oh my days, growabeardnow.com actually is legit. It is, I'm telling you, it is my website. I made it and I've got tips on growing a beard. I'm not even making it up. Go to growabeardnow.com and you can see my video and all of my uh, products for sale. Beep, beep, beep in a Jeep says, is it an Amish website? Look, we covered this earlier. The Amish do not have mustaches, see? No mustache, although he is smoking a gentlemanly pipe. Uh, Amish people do not have mustaches, therefore I cannot be on it. Amish, it's logic. Logic, my friends. El Toro Guaco says, I'm currently shaving to make a stark goatee before my second, uh, before May 2nd. Well, kudos to you, a goatee, while not as glorious as a beard, is certainly 
better than being baby-faced. <laughs> Zaniqua says, here's a, spoil a spoiler alert for Ox Orange Grow a Beard, How to Grow a Beard blog post. Tip number one, don't shave. Hey, you guessed it, my friend. <laughs> how, did you, how did you guess that? Directions on growing a beard. Do not shave. You're welcome. <laughs> WGSX Frank says, my beard grows extremely fast. Last time I shaved was two weeks ago, and it's already over half an inch long. You, sir, have a rare gift. You should exploit that. But there are a few people who can grow a beard as fast as you can. In fact, I think yours probably grows faster than mine, although mine does grow fairly fast. Watch a lot of Duck Dynasty. You'll be encouraged to grow a beard. Just saying. This is one fireball. Let's see if I can put this here. Then there we go. Cam Bob says beard growth pills. Do you use them? I have personally have not used them. Although one of the reigning beard champions in the world, I believe his name is um, I forget his name, but he's the guy with the long red beard. He uses them and he swears by them. Rotopris says, Oxwan, I have a question about your video on growabeardnow.com. Ask away, my friend. What is your question? Uh, Rotopris asks, was that the bearded baby in the middle, or was it just a random person's hand? No, that was my son grabbing for my beard. It wasn't a random person's hand. He, he, he's just enamored of the beard. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I can hear my beautiful wife preparing dinner, and so I am going to have to cut this short and finish this at a later date. I'll be sure to tweet images of it once it is fully consumed. But thank you all for coming to this week's episode of Sc Scotch and Smoke Rings, episode 190. I will leave you with a few more smoke rings. One final cheers. Cheers. And thanks for coming again. And be sure, my friends, that you all stay classy. Okay, trying to end the broadcast, but my button is not popping up. Where? Trying to end. How do I... How do I stop recording? Cam Bob says, will you finish the cigar later? I will, and I'll be sure to tweet out images of it. You can follow me on Twitter at at Oxhorn or on Facebook at uh, facebook.com slash Oxhorn. Ah, where's the... Ah, where's the button? Okay, my computer's lagging. Big time. Let's see if I can uh, help it by closing some of the windows I have open here. Yeah, it's not allowing me to actually turn off my camera. Let's close this tab and close this tab and close that tab and close that tab and close that tab and close that tab. Oh, yes, that's another tab. I'll close that tab. Great. Now, can I turn it off? Let's see. I'm working on it. All right, I think I have the button up here. So, sayonara, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for coming. I'll see you next week.